it is thanks to these men that the worst was avoided. A second explosion, ten times more powerful than Hiroshima, which would have wiped out half of Europe. This was kept secret for 20 years by the Soviets and the West alike. Many of these images have never been seen before. They were taken by journalists who were also exposed to nuclear contamination. If you live in a place where you get even some electricity from nuclear power, for more than 30 years, whether you realize it or not, you have been paying a tax to find a place to store waste from your nuclear plant safely. How much are we talking about? The government is sitting on a, a pool of about $25 billion. That, with interest, is now worth $30 billion, with a B. And where's the money now, and what is it being used for? But the government is sitting on it, and they're not doing what we're paying them to do. And that money is earning interest about a billion dollars a year, and some of it is being used for program costs, according to the Department of Energy. But the idea was to use all of it to store the nation's nuclear waste in a bleak spot in the Nevada desert called Yucca Mountain. So how much nuclear waste has been stored in Yucca Mountain? Not a single ounce. The nuclear waste has been going nowhere. Nuclear power plants in the U.S. have been doing what Japan has been doing. Instead of storing the waste in this multi-billion dollar, scientifically studied waste depository in Nevada, the waste is being stored right where it's being created, on site at nuclear plants across the country. Two years ago, when we first reported this story, it was easy for Nevada Senator Harry Reid to tell us nuclear waste was safer right where it was. Leave it on site, where it is. You don't have to worry about transporting it. It saves the country billions and billions of dollars. But Japan's crisis has even Democrats wondering if Harry Reid's effort to keep nuclear waste out of his state is really safer. I truly believe we must begin to rethink how we manage spent fuel. If this were a real fuel assembly, it would be 13 feet long, and it would weigh over 1,000 pounds. This is what that waste looks like. This is a mock-up of a fuel rod assembly, a tightly engineered package of steel tubes coated with a zirconium alloy that protects the highly radioactive uranium pellets inside. Except for the height, it's the same as a real fuel rod. Even when the fuel is taken out of the reactor, uh, radioactive decay continues. Uh, the uh, fuel rods continue to generate a great deal of heat and they also generate a great deal of radioactivity. Kevin Crowley directs nuclear and radiation studies for the National Academy of Sciences. And from his research, he knows how dangerous these spent fuel rods could be in the event of attack or natural disaster. There is no such thing as zero risk in any technology. In his office in downtown Washington, attorney Jay Silberg is very much aware of that danger. Silberg represents many of the nation's nuclear utilities who have been suing the federal government to try to force it to pay for continued storage on plant sites. Suing the feds to pay for what he says the government should have sorted out years ago. Well, the government, unfortunately, has made it more of a mess than it should have been. The program when it was set up was supposed to be science-based. Millions, billions of dollars have been spent in studying Yucca Mountain. I, I refer to it as the most studied piece of rock in the world. The latest picture CNN has of that most studied piece of rock are from 2002. We wanted to go back there to show you what's going on at Yucca Mountain now, but the government, citing safety, said no. Members of Congress say they, too, are being kept out. That despite not an ounce of nuclear waste on the property. But because of what is happening right now in Japan, and because the same conditions exist here, the Yucca Mountain closure that seemingly was a complete done and sealed deal is being rethought. Because everyone now realizes the dangers of all this waste, Elliot, and so many potentially dangerous areas around the country, it's just, it's, you have to do something. You know, it's been horrific what's happened over in Japan at so many levels. What it has also generated is, is sort of one of those educational moments. We all look at nuclear power plants. We used to worry about meltdown. The active reactor could go bad dangerous radioactivity spewing all over. Now we're understanding these spent fuel pools could be at least as great a risk. 
Right, and it's the not in my backyard syndrome, which is why those fuel rods stay where they are, which is why uh, the, the plant in Tokyo has, or in Japan, has six reactors at the same spot. Right. Just keep piling it on the same place that's already been approved. That is not going to work out. That's not going to be a politically viable solution based on what's happened in Japan. Yeah, NIMBYism gone wild, and we need an answer somehow, somewhere, given that we already have 104 nuclear power plants in the nation, even if we don't build anymore, right. which we're not we right now. We have the waste. All right. The operator of the troubled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant is struggling to remove highly radioactive wastewater pool near the reactors. This is quite challenging as water levels keep rising. Workers are speeding up their efforts to prepare facilities where the water will be transferred. At the nuclear power plant, highly radioactive water has been hampering efforts to restore reactor cooling systems. Workers also fear that the contaminated water may leak into the sea and groundwater. At the number two reactor, where the concentration of the radioactivity is the highest in the complex, hundreds of tons of water was transferred to a condenser till April the 13th, which reduced the water level in a nearby tunnel by 8 centimeters. The water level, however, started to rise again, and as of 7 a.m. this morning, it was 2.5 centimeters higher than what it was before the transfer. At the number two unit, operators took measures to stop the spill of the contaminated water from the vertical shaft or pit to the sea, which successfully stopped the flow on April the 6th. According to TEPCO, blocked water may be finding its way into the tunnel. The utility says that the contaminated water should be removed as soon as possible to the water processing facility. They say they will check and reinforce the facility and will start filling it by the end of next week. Meanwhile, the water accumulated in the sub-drain pit, which stores the discharge from both number one and number two reactors, was found to be contaminated with maximum 38 times of radioactive materials on April the 14th, compared with what it was a week earlier. TEPCO says that the contaminated water may be flowing from number two reactor into the underground facilities and decided to inspect the water samples three times a week rather than the current once a week in order to monitor the developments. Two men die that night. Twenty-eight more will follow in the next few months. They are the first victims of Chernobyl. Nobody was prepared for such a crisis. For the next seven months, 500,000 men will wage hand-to-hand -hand combat with an invisible enemy. A ruthless battle that has gone unsung, which claimed thousands of unnamed and now almost forgotten heroes. Yet, it is thanks to these men that the worst was avoided. A second explosion, ten times more powerful than Hiroshima, which would have wiped out half of Europe. This was kept secret for 20 years by the Soviets and the West alike. Many of these images have never been seen before. They were taken by journalists who were also exposed to nuclear contamination, some of whom later died. Those images tell the story of a hidden war, whose consequences continue 20 years later to worsen the toll of the disaster. This is the true story of the Battle of Chernobyl.